I want to talk to you, uh, representing both the communities team and the uh, fellowship team, a little bit about how we can share our best practices uh, here from Code for America and vice versa with our international partners. Um, a lot of times back in 2012, when this cute picture was taken uh, of our fellows and Jen, um, reporters often thought of the civic tech movement as a very US-centric thing uh, that not uh, wasn't really widespread to kind of a global community. But that's what um, civic tech and civic hacking movement is. It's a global community whose language is as much Spanish uh, Chinese, Tagalog, as it is English. And the texture of that conversation is not just in code, right, but it also in languages spanning the entire world. Um, and so in response to that growth of the civic tech movement, uh, Code for America responded by creating the Code for All program, um, which supported a cohort uh, of initial international partners including uh, El Laboratorio para la Ciudad, um, Code for Germany, and Code for the Caribbean. Um, and with that, uh, created values around how uh, we would engage with those international partners in a non-imperialistic and also very supportive and networked fashion. Um, and I just want to highlight kind of that last point, right? We help build an ecosystem. We help uh, try to stop reusing uh, or uh, reinventing the wheel of old uh, uh, strategies and uh, try to keep things um, really fresh. And why that's important, right, is we're scaling um, really fast in terms of the movement. We now have six international partners, um, country partners, as well as even more uh, international brigades and more folks coming online to uh, the power of open data in public space. Um, and so it's becoming more and more important, more pressing, right, to figure out how can we share our resources in a really networked way, and how can we make that scalable so we can, um, as Catherine Bracey, our communities director, likes to say, take ourselves out of the center, right, and really create a, a really resilient network of support among our international partners. Um, so when we learn about kind of these challenges um, that are coming up in our kind of overall network, I collaborated with Lynn Fine, uh, who's our international program manager, to really think about how we can really uh, work on, on, on these challenges. Uh, today, she uh, congratulated uh, Code for Mexico City on finishing off their first fellowship class ever. So awesome. Good job, Lynn. Um, woo! And Code for Mexico City. Um, and what we did was we really researched and dived deep into all of our partners um, uh, who had started a fellowship, like Code for Caribbean, uh, who just wrapped up in March. Um, they were working on a stop it, stopping uh, livestock theft, which I think is so cool. Um, as well as um, looking at uh, kind of the um, challenges faced by a lot of our other um, uh, partners coming online um, with a fellowship program. And when we saw a lot of the questions that they were facing that were really similar, um, both at the tactical level and the strategic level around how to run a fellowship. Um, we also thought to ourselves, like, how can we not be kind of one-on-one -on -one consultants, right? How can we uh, replicate best practices and really be there for them in a good way? Uh, Code for Australia as well. Um, and so with that realization um, and kind of following models of other parts of our programs, like the uh, Code for Record for Game Toolkit, um, we are launching a international fellowship toolkit, um, the components of which uh, will be a how-to guide um, that will not be just composed of how Code for America runs its fellowship program, but also um, all of our best practices and resources from our partners as well. Um, and it will range from both like really high-level stuff to really tactical examples, and it will also live up to the values that Catherine Bracey, Lynn, 
everyone on the team, uh, of the communities team and the international uh, code for all team um, have espoused. It will be open source, written markdown on a platform called Gitbook. Um, and it will be uh, very tested to make sure that it really focuses on the needs of our international partners. Um, our process and our documentation around our process deserves to be just as open source, simple and beautiful and easy to use as any of our apps, as any of our products or the things that we make. Um, because those are part of the services that we deliver, not just to our citizens, but to our partner organizations. And so I just kind of want to leave you with that. Um, it's, our, it's being drafted right now. And if you want to get involved, especially to translate or to point out gaps or to point us to other programs that we should be connected to, um, please go to that link and sign up to get notified when things get updated. Thank you so much.